Hi, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and right now I am spinning a two-ply yarn on my Kromsky Fantasia. This yarn is not a normal two-ply yarn because I'm actually plying two different fiber types together. One of the plies was a single spun out of uh, some Knit Picks Bare Wool of the Andes Roving, and the other ply it was spun from Knit Picks Bare Stroll Roving. The first one is 100% Peruvian Highland Wool, and the second one is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. This is giving us a beautiful two-ply yarn that has some really unique properties. Um, since one of the strands is superwash, we know it'll absorb dye faster than the other. So even though this looks like a solid sort of off-white yarn right now, once it dyes, then we'll see more of a barber pull effect. I have dyed a similar yarn that was actually a commercial yarn in a previous episode of Dye Putt Weekly, but I've never tried making my own yarn stranding different fiber types in order to dye it. If I look really closely at the yarn, I can sort of see a difference between the two fiber types. The superwash yarn is smoother um, and sort of a little less fluffy, even though these were spun in very, very similar ways. I started with 100 grams of yarn on each of my two bobbins. So I will have a total of 200 grams um, of this unique two-ply yarn. And I cannot wait to see what we might get out of it when we get ready to start dyeing it. So now I'm going to finish up applying the yarn and then I'll come back as I decide how we want this to go down. Even though I can tell the difference between the two plies as I am spinning it, it is, you know, they, they do look very, very similar. So, I don't know, I'm just really excited to add some color to this. Now I just have to finish plying this yarn and cross my fingers I can fit all of it onto one bobbin so we can figure out exactly how we want to dye this yarn. I spun this ages ago, and in fact I haven't gone back and re-watched that spinning footage, but now we are finally going to start dyeing this yarn. There's approximately 200 grams of yarn in here, and so I'm not going to dye it all at once. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go make a few mini skeins of this. Uh, I'm not necessarily going to measure the length or anything, but we can play with a few different techniques and see how these different plies that we have here will absorb color. Because as you know, one is superwash, one isn't. And if you look closely, you can almost see that difference. The stroll roving is a bit slippier, slipperier, um, and maybe because it doesn't have those barbs, but I am really excited to dye this. I made two mini skeins that are four to five grams each. I think one is about four and a half, the other one is a bit over five. Uh, and we will dye these today in two different techniques to get some ideas of how we might want to dye the full skein later on. I have pre-soaked the mini skeins in just some plain tap water for about an hour. Now to dye the yarn, we're going to do something a little bit different today. I have my dedicated dye steam pan here. It's a four inch deep pan, but it is mostly full with water and I'm heating that up. And now I have this aluminum pan with two cups of water in it. Um, and maybe I'll add more volume, but we're going to use this to dye one of the skeins. And then we will use another pan to dye another. And maybe we'll try to keep this one dry. Um, but uh, or maybe we'll have to add some water to it as well so that way it doesn't just float. But I haven't tried using these aluminum pans for dyeing it as sort of like a double boiler steamer situation, but this will allow us to dye with having plenty of space, two skeins at the same time. And I'm curious to see what I think of this technique and if this is something to explore further as well. Even though we are using dedicated dye equipment today, I am going to use food coloring as our dye source. 
we have some leftover Wilton Violet DIY sprinkles that broke beautifully that we'll use on one of our minis. And then on the other, we're going to use some Wilton Colorite Base Black. This is a color that breaks, and so we'll create sort of a more tonal colorway using this. Um, and so I'm curious what we might see difference-wise between the two plies on our hand spun. I am comfortable using my cooking pots and pans to dye yarn with food coloring, but I wanted to have everything spread out and fit into one frame so we could watch it easily, and so that's why I decided to use my dedicated dye equipment today. But this is all equipment that I would never use for food that I was going to consume. Now that things are hot, let's add some dye into our pan. And I'm gonna just do, oh, we're gonna do two drops of black. I might regret it, <laughs> since we only have five grams of yarn in our mini, but I'm just gonna stir it up. And the, the water in this pan is hot. Oh, I need some acid. All right, since so we've got two cups of water, I am going to add one teaspoon of white vinegar. And then I think the nice thing about having these pans be aluminum is that they are not too hot. All right, now I'm gonna take one of the hand spun mini skeins and I squeezed out most of that water. And now we're gonna put this into our black mixture. And who knows what we might see. But I am moving it. Ooh, see those reds start so fast? You can see the blue come up. Um, I do see some barber pulling so far um, between those colors. I could have had more liquid in here. Um, but this setup might allow me to do something that someone had suggested where I can have like part of a skein in water and part out. So I want, I, I'm sure I can get these pans that are like the full size, but let me show you. But yes, we see breaking and barber pulling already where one is mostly pink and the blues are going into the other. Um, I'm, I think that that is really, really cool. Um, so I wonder if it's that the red struck all over and that the superwash yarn is getting more of those blues. So because we are in this double boiler situation here, uh, this is not as hot as what we might see if we were here in the pan directly. But I did work it out, at least I tried, so that the bottom of this pan should be in contact with the water. But if uh, we need to, I can add more acid in here along the way. But that is pretty striking and really fun. We're gonna let that keep heating. And I am going to bring over our second mini skein. The sun there is, n oh, we don't have acid yet. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna add a glug of vinegar to this container and then dunk the mini skein in here for 30 seconds or so, just so that way we have some acid in there so the speckling te technique has a better shot of working. Okay, now I'm gonna take the mini out, squeeze out a lot of that liquid, and I'm debating adding some of this over there, but I think I'm just gonna let that sit for a bit. And then I am going to spread this out as much as I can. And it should, yep, it should get warm from the pan. Um, so we'll see, I have not tried something like this. I don't know if I'll need to like cover it, to steam it, to set it, and I'm not wearing gloves, which could be a little mistake, but let's add on some of these Wilton's Violet sprinkles. and. Just like the other sprinkles that I made using liquid drops, um, these, uh, they work really well to like get the color spread out, but they aren't as coarse as say, uh, some that you might see from like, if you just bought them directly from the store. And I'm gonna go heavy, uh, just because we want 
a lot of color in here. Uh, I probably will flip this yarn over. I don't know if we'll need to like set up a steamer basket for it or if I can just cover this with foil, but we will see. I already can tell there was a little liquid in the pan and I will rinse my hand off and then come show you. All right, there's a little bit of liquid down there um, and so some sprinkles are dissolving there and I barely see any dissolve. Okay, some of them are starting to dissolve onto the yarn and strike. Uh, my fingers are a little bit pink from not wearing gloves, but I am going to let this sit for a little bit before we move it. Maybe about five minutes. And in the meantime, checking on this yarn, there is a fair amount of blue left. Let's go ahead and add some of this water that I used to pre-soak um, the other one, which had a splash of acid in it. Uh, that might not be enough uh, for all the blues to strike, but at least it can let things sort of move around a little bit more in the pan. After five minutes, some of these sprinkles have sunk in and we see some pretty halos, but a lot have just beaded up on the surface and they aren't sinking in, they're just sort of sitting there. <laughs> so I'm tempted to wait a little longer before moving it. So I know if I move it, I'm gonna introduce streaks. And there's a lot that are sinking in. So you can see a lot of speckles, but yeah, I'm curious. And as for our other mini, the blue has mostly absorbed. 15 minutes later, and our yarn in back, this has cleared. I'm actually going to carefully lift this up and set it aside so it can cool. This one, I bet if I rotate it, now it is floating and I see some of those little bubbles are starting to sink in. We are moving um, and things are now steamier because uh, part of that is uncovered, but I wonder if that actually helped. But you can see um, some beautiful broken speckles appearing. I'm curious if we might see a difference, uh, you know, whether things seem to have a pink spread versus a blue spread. Uh, but uh, I guess I'm gonna let this wait another 10 minutes and then no matter what, even if there are some little beaded up colors left, we will uh, flip it and dye the other side. One thing that's about this is fun is I can bring this up to you. And so you can see we still have some beading on the surface, but we also have a lot of actual speckles and spread and ew. Oh, I didn't consider that. The yarn dried out. Huh. Okay, that that's a problem. That is a legit problem that we did not consider. Uh, and now we know. Turns out, if you heat something for a while not covered, it, the, yeah, stuff dried out. That is really interesting. Okay, I'm gonna dunk this back in the pre-soak. Um, and this time, yeah, so now we've got some light blue spread, uh, like we saw in the original video that I did with, um, with the sprinkles. But this time I'm not, I'm squeezing it a little bit. I'm leaving more liquid in here um, to bring over. But that, my friends, is interesting. I hadn't touched the actual yarn because I was trying not to, and it completely dried out. That's why stuff wasn't going in. Um, I wouldn't have known. Okay, let's add some more. So maybe it would be worth I mean, not today, but a different day, doing another mini skein with this. But 
we certainly learned something and that if you leave the yarn sort of heating um, even at low temperature <laughs> it's gonna dry out I did not anticipate that but we've got some beautiful pastel breaking on the backdrop and so I think that this is going to be lovely okay so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this I'm like, oh, I want to let this sit. No, we're not going to let it sit. Ooh, and it's warm. It is warm. Okay, we're going to flip it. Fry my hands off. And then speckle some more. And then we will let it sit. And if we need to uh, cover this, we can do that. But maybe I should flip with my other hand. But it is nice. Okay, but the heat transfer that I'm feeling in here, I like. I like that the yarn is hot when we're doing this. Uh, I actually, during the break while we were waiting, went to like the web, web restaurant store or whatever it's called and was looking up perforated um, steam inserts because I think that that with like a lid would be a better choice than floating this on for speckles but okay I am now going to call it with this skein and we have these sugar sprinkles for another time um, but this is beautiful let me uh, bring you closer yeah and here you can see we see breaking on the plies and we're gonna have speckles this is gonna be stunning and this honestly might end up being the way that I want to dye this yarn because this is breathtaking um, but I'd have to remember that I speckle and then I dunked it and then I speckled some more uh, so we'll have to keep that in mind because the whole process here overall is pretty unique and I'm not a hundred percent sure I can replicate it I also just discovered while I was pressing this down gently that we have sprung a lake this is why I don't really recommend these aluminum pans for dyeing um, aluminum might be not be the best choice for many reasons but one of them is that they're very fragile, uh, but yeah, I think I will order <laughs> some uh, steam inserts that I can add into some of these larger pans because I think that that would be really fun to do for speckling, even if, uh, yeah, even if it's not perfect with this setup that we've got today. It's a little blown out, but this other mini skein is stunning absolutely stunning there's so much potential with this I removed the water from that pan and then used it as a lid and there's some steam on the bottom that's good um, okay things are still damp things are going in I think it's warm the pan is hot the yarn is quite warm I think Okay, I think I'm going to leave it in there for 10 more minutes and then I'm going to remove it. Um, there's certainly things drying out, but uh, I'm going to cover it. <laughs> I could cover it with tin foil, but since I have this other pan here, why not? I might raise, since it's a little covered, I'll raise the heat a little bit and 10 more minutes and then I'm going to set it aside. And when we wash it, we'll see how much comes out, like how well that heat set really is. Okay, let's turn everything off. Let's remove that lid and the yarn is definitely warm. Stuff over here has dried out and this, I mean this yarn is beautiful. Okay, it's nice and warm. I'm flipping it. I'm actually going to keep it covered, set it aside, let it cool so then we can go wash it. Let's wash our yarn. Then off camera, I'll wash the pan. Although this one has a leak in it now. So it is not as useful anymore. All right, I'm gonna wash them together. And I do need to be a little gentle because um, there is some non superwash in here. And we see some sprinkles have just straight come off. But otherwise, I'm not seeing any bleeding. That was just some sprinkles that had it dissolved. I'm now adding some dish soap. And you can see my stained fingertip. 
but yeah, no, no bleeding. I don't think this is so little yarn. I'm probably not going to put through the spin dryer, but I will rinse out the soap, um, and then we'll hang these up to dry and come back with some conclusions. Uh, it looks like we get some barber pulling on our more speckled one as well, but um, we'll need to take a closer look at all of it. Both of these colorways turned out absolutely stunning. With our black low immersion, well, first of all, you can see how the yarn has bloomed, which is beautiful, but you can see that there's a darker ply and a lighter ply. The darker ply is our stroll base. The lighter ply is the wool of the Andes. And I'm not sure if you can tell. There we go. But you can see the difference in the smoothness of our superwash versus non-superwash fibers here really, really well. And I think that has to do with removing the scales in the process. But this yarn looks beautiful and I would happily knit with it. Our violet speckled yarn also turned out beautiful. Once again, we can see a difference between our superwash and non-superwash plies, both in terms of that loftiness. You can see the more disorder in that paler uh, non-superwash ply, but also the pigmentation. And there's more color, especially with the blues in our superwash yarn, because with less acid, the blues can st start striking that faster, and that's why we end up seeing that difference, which is really cool. We learned something while dyeing this colorway, and that is if you heat slightly damp yarn, it's gonna dry out. But thankfully, the yarn isn't damaged, and because it was in this do double boiler type situation, like none of the sugar burnt or anything, and so we didn't, again, damage the yarn. But looking at this, you see the speckles in the barber pole? This, to me, looks like it was spun after it was dyed. Uh, I think that if you didn't realize or look closely enough to see that the, um, to see that, you know, there were two different types of fiber in the plies, it looks like almost that you applied two different things together just from some of the randomness where you see dark and light. Now, the dark and light sort of goes together throughout the skein, like we've got a pastel section, more pigmented pastel, and even in these pastel sections, you can see that the superwash is a little bit baby blue and the non-superwash is a little bit baby pink. I'm a huge fan of Wilton's Violet anyway, you all know that, but Something about this and trying the speckles makes me really want to play with uh, this type of technique more. I don't know if this is what I want to do exactly on the full skein, but it is a fun idea. Learning to spin yarn is a natural extension from learning to dye yarn in the sense that if you want to play around with different ways to apply color to your yarn, at some point there's a limit of what you can do when you're just dealing with bare yarn. But if you can dye the fiber and then spin it, then there's more ways you can create heathers and the barber pole type things. And it just adds another level of what you can control with your colorways. I don't often dye my hand spun yarn for some of these reasons that I was mentioning. My preference would be to dye the fiber and then spin it to play around with those ways of incorporating color into your yarn. If I'm going to spin some bare yarn and then over dye it, at some stage it's very much like dyeing commercial yarn. Of course, hand spun has different qualities, especially if it's a more novice hand spun like mine with thick and thin. And so there's no question that there can be unique things about that yarn that are wonderful and I love. But in terms of the dyeing, I, I think that I prefer to dye the fiber in advance, except for these circumstances today. You could definitely create yarn very similar to this by dyeing fiber separately and then plying two different colorways together, especially for uh, this colorway right here. But I think that there's something really, really fun about creating a unique hand spun yarn where you know that the 
different fibers in it will take up color differently and then you design it with the intent to dye it. And this leads to getting something that is super, super unique. And this, this colorway right here is amazing. From heating the yarn, it definitely let the yarn bloom a bit more, which maybe is something I really need to do more, but I, I'm just really excited. And there's so, many, there's so much potential on how I can finish dyeing this skein. And please, please, please let me know down in the comments how you think I should dye it. Do you think I should dye it with one of these techniques or should I maybe try doing some acid dye speckles or something like that and just see how it takes? I definitely could also do another test or two before dyeing the full skein. There's no reason why I have to go straight to dyeing the whole thing. I really hope that this video showed a few different things. One, experiment with your dyeing techniques. If you want to dye yarn and you're not sure exactly what you want to do and something about that base is very unique, you can dye just a few yards to experiment and get a sense of what you like and don't like. The same goes for when you want to try out a new technique. I wanted to see if I could use the disposable aluminum roasting pans as a double boiler and if maybe that would be a good way to steam. Oh, I could have poked holes in it. That would have been cool. That is something that I totally missed. I could have poked holes in the bottom, had the water level lower, and then absolutely steamed with it. That I think would work great. That is something that I intend to try. <laughs> uh, but anyway, you can use minis to test out different techniques where you won't risk damaging 100 grams of yarn. You're only risking, you know, 5, 10, 20 grams. And so it's a way to refine and test and see what you might want to try more of in the future. There's nothing wrong if you want to test something out with a full skein. Uh, that is totally fine and works really well actually but I know that sometimes resources are limited and if you go back and look at the really oldest Chemnitz dyeing videos I was dealing with tiny mini skeins because I was trying to make 100 grams of yarn stretch as far as possible and I wasn't going to dye a lot of yarn unless I needed it for a specific project and so I filmed and I did my early experiments on minis and learned a lot along the way and I guess the rest is history. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I still haven't watched the spinning footage yet so we'll see uh, how consistent that feels with the rest of the video. But I know there have been some requests for some more spinning videos and so if people would like some spinning vlogs or maybe some spinning set to music or something like that, let me know down in the comments and it might just give me an excuse to bring the wheel out a little bit more and spin up some fiber. Also let me know if your preference is for me to spin fiber that I've dyed, I have quite a collection of that, or if I should dye some of the fiber, say from the Paradise Fibers Fiber of the Month Club subscription box. Uh, what would you like to see the most? Make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications turned on so you never miss a new video. And if you're already a subscriber and a huge fan of all things Chemnitz, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Uh, a lot of times patrons get early advanced sneak peeks of content, and in this case, they got sneak peeks twice. A sneak peek, I think, from when I was creating and plying this yarn to begin with, and a sneak peek of me dyeing these minis. And so these little behind the scenes live streams exclusive for patrons is a really fun way to connect. There's a lot of other perks and varying levels that you can support the content here, and so it's worth checking out. You can find a link in the video description and in the iCard. There are a few other options for some behind the scene looks at all things Chemnitz. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, I do post occasional behind the scenes things to my stories or even my main feed. And it's fun to check out and it's a great way to get announcements and things from me as well. Uh, you can find the links and all of my handles everywhere you can find me down in the video description. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Fun.